Did you guys know that the single most effective way of reducing your energy bill is to go around your house and change out your bulbs to LED bulbs? Pretty interesting. And if you think about it, there's a lot of stuff about LED that just sounds like marketing hype. But what's really going on inside the bulb? We're going to find out next. Coming up next right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to take a deep dive into light bulbs because there's a lot of nuances to light bulbs and a lot of marketing hype. So let's just cut right through it and show you some examples of bulbs that I have here around my house because I did convert everything in my house over to LED technology for some really good reasons. So first off, let's go over some of the background history to bulbs. And I have a perfect example right here. This is an incandescent bulb. And it's an incandescent bulb because there's a pressurized gas inside the chamber of the bulb and there's a filament which operates at the mains voltage. So if you have 120 volts coming in, that little filament right there is burning or heating up at the mains potential, which is 120 volts. These other bulbs that I'm gonna show you, they do not operate at mains potential. This guy right here has a little tiny filament. It's a little coil and it goes from one post over to the next and it heats up extremely hot and that will give off photons, uh, which is light. But the byproduct of a lot of this is that it creates a lot of heat. They are not very efficient. And the biggest indicator of that is right here on the sleeve. This little bulb is 120 volts, 25 watts. 25 watts for this little bulb. And this guy comes out of one of those uh, lava lamps. It's a lava lamp bulb. So it just heats up that tiny little uh, lava lamp, but this guy uses 25 watts. Now, 25 watts doesn't seem like very much, but for the amount of light that this guy produces as a light bulb, that's horrible. Incandescent bulbs, they use a little coil. It operates at mains, full mains potential, and it's basically a resistor, and resistors create heat. This heat, a byproduct, is light. So it gives off light. The only reason that this little tiny coil doesn't magically burn up is because the compressed gas that's inside there. It will instantly oxidize and catch fire if there's oxygen inside the bulb. So these guys are either at a vacuum or there's some sort of inert gas that's inside them. If there was a leak that develops in the bulb, it will burn up and it will just, poof. you flick on the light and the light goes out. A lot of those are due to a leak. So that's the incandescent bulb. Now after incandescence, we developed this technology called fluorescent and fluorescent bulbs are absolutely everywhere and they have been for the last 30 or 40 years. Every time you see one of those long shop lights, you see fluorescent. The early LED and some of those flat screen TVs, they had fluorescent bulbs around the perimeter and that's what actually created your backlight. This is called a CFL, which is a compact fluorescent bulb and it has 120 volts that come in and it steps up the voltage and creates a high voltage arc inside this coil, which has a special type of gas inside. It's usually some sort of form of mercury vapor, but different bulbs have different things. And it excites that gas, which creates the photons, which creates light. Now these bulbs at a 60 watt potential or equivalent, so, it, 60 watt equivalent of a incandescent, this guy will burn 15 to 20 watts. You would think that 15 to 20 watts is acceptable. And it was, it was a big improvement. CFLs saved a lot of energy, but they have some other problems. They don't like to be dimmed very much. And they don't like to be flicked on and off. These type of bulbs don't play well with motion detectors because they will flick on and off more often and if this bulb is turned on, turned off, like in a bathroom, something like that, they burn out much, much more quickly than they're supposed to. So that's the CFL. They also produce some heat. Inside the dome right here is your step-up transformer that will create, it's, it's basically a ballast. 
and it creates the high voltage arc that's needed to excite the gas up in here. So that is that one. If it develops a leak or if the step up transformer uh, ballast circuit becomes defective, then those bulbs will burn out. So there's multiple modes of failure on those. And that brings us to LED bulbs. Now LED bulbs are extremely special because you have 120 volts that comes in and instead of stepping up the voltage, they usually step the voltage down. So here you can see I have an air ray. They're probably wired in series. And then we have an LED driver. So LED bulbs, LEDs in general, just want to operate at a dead short. If you allow them to, they will keep increasing the current until they, poof, they blow up. They like to operate at a dead short. So what we do is we regulate the amount of voltage and current using a driver circuit. And there's some very special things that go on here. Because they're diodes, they operate in one direction. And that means that we have to convert the voltage over to DC. And I have a bridge rectifier right here. I have some current detect and I have a controller chip right here. Now there is a big difference in LED bulbs because some of them can be dimmed and some of them cannot. The circuitry, your driver, actually flicks the LEDs on and off at an extremely fast rate. They don't just turn on and stay on, they're flicking on and off. And it's evident in some cameras, depending on the frame rate of the camera, you can actually see it flicker. A lot of the modern day automobiles, you see YouTube videos about modern automobiles, you'll see the headlights flickering, you're like, what's going on? It's because the frame rate has a conflict with the camera and the refresh rate of the LEDs on the driver. So there is two types of LED bulbs. One of them is dimmable and one of them is not dimmable. I have two perfect examples right here of this. So these are surface mount LEDs. You can see them right here. And underneath this guy, you can see I have one smoothing capacitor and on that wire that goes down to the base is a fuse. Right down there, that black wire at the bottom has got an inline fuse. So that means it is a fuse bulb, whereas with incandescent, the filament itself acts as the fuse. So you have to have an extra safety feature, which is the inline fuse that goes down to the button on the base. So this one here, I believe that this bulb is not dimmable because it is a very stupid bulb. It's, it's not intelligent by any means, and it has no voltage correction or compensation for when you dim it. It, the voltage mains comes in and it just gets rectified right here at the bridge rectifier and then it goes over into the, the current circuit and goes out to your LED series. Now this guy, this guy right here has a different type of LED. You see each one of these rods is an actual diode. Now they look like little compact fluorescent tubes but they're actually diodes. You can measure them with a multimeter and you should get continuity in one direction and you reverse it and you should have open. But that's because they're diodes. But these are LEDs, they're light emitting diodes. So these ones here are also in a matrix and I know that these two here are in series because there's only two wires coming down to this board. They come right here to the top. Now this is stored in the little button base right here. And this is your driver assembly. So right here's my inline fuse. And the inline fuse goes into a bridge rectifier, which then goes in the smoothing capacitor. And you notice it's got this little transformer right here and some other filtering caps, which tells me that this guy is probably a compensating bulb, which allows it to be dimmed. Some LEDs are dimmable, some are not. You can see why a dimmable LED would actually be more expensive because it's much more complex on this guy than this guy. Now the downside to this LED bulb is that the outer shroud was glass. So I had or have glass all over my tabletop, which is one of the other convenient factors of LED bulbs. LEDs often come 
with polymer protectors, which is an excellent safety feature. Right here, right above me, all these LED lights, they look like compact fluorescent tubes, but they are, in fact, LEDs. And the whole entire tube is encased in a polymer, so I don't have to worry about shattering the glass by working in a workshop. Like, that never happens. So why would I want to convert over to LED bulbs in general? Well, this one right here takes 25 watts for this little guy and it creates a lot of heat. Heat is a fire hazard. It's actually very inefficient. So if you're centrally cooling your house, like in Houston, Texas, where I am, these type of bulbs give off a lot of heat and you have to compensate for that by upping your energy bill in your air conditioning system. These guys here also create a decent amount of heat but these guys here contain mercury vapor and they burn at 15 to 25 watts. These type of bulbs right here, you can get rather good quality LED bulbs that burn six or five watts. Now some of them will go as high as nine or 10 watts. Let's see, what is this guy here rated at? Uh, this guy is 9.5 watts. Now you will notice if you look online, that some of them say five watts, some of them say six watts, and then they will say 60 watt equivalent. This one here is a 9.5 watt, 840 lumens. Holy cow, 840 lumens. That is like a 75 watt bulb. And this one here only burns 9.5 watts. But what is one of the other special things that LEDs can do? LED bulbs can change their color temperature. Now some of them, you can change the color temperature either with a dip switch or by turning them on and off. It activates different functions, but most of them you just buy at a certain color bandwidth. This one here is 5000K. 5000K is a nice bright daylight type of bulb, much like the shop lights right here. I like a very white bright light because if I'm working on stuff, I like to be able to see all the intricate details. Now some of these, like CFLs, they start out white, but very quickly they actually yellow. You can see right here around the base that they'll discolor and the CFLs will decrease the amount of light output over time, which LEDs technically do too, but not to the degree of CFL bulbs. So these guys here don't use as much electricity and they don't create as much heat, but they do still create some heat. In fact, heat is the number one thing that destroys LED bulbs. Because if you put them in a tight enclosure, they don't have enough cooling air or circulating air to help cool it down. You can see that this guy actually has an aluminum sleeve around the side underneath the circuit board you see that, that is actually to aid the cooling of the bulb. So I have a variety of these types. So here's one type of matrix, the one I showed you. Here is another one, and this one is kind of fascinating. So uh, this guy here is another standard size base. Um, you can see the yellow up inside, that's your inline fuse. And they have some of the other standard features, which are you've got a, a diode matrix. So instead of using a bridge rectifier, this guy actually uses two diodes and that creates a half bridge rectifier and a controller chip. So this is a very cheap bulb and it's got two smoothing capacitors and it has to have the two smoothing capacitors because it's using a half bridge rectification, just two diodes. So very simple, but those two wires from the base come up here and this is your diode matrix. This is a glass plate. You'd probably be thinking, why would they use a glass plate inside a polymer bulb? Well, one of the reasons that you use the glass plate is because it helps diffuse the light, which spreads the light out. The other reason is because the diodes do actually create some heat and you want to be able to cool them off. And the way that you cool them off is either leave them suspended in the air, like this guy, or this guy here, you mount them to a glass plate. The glass is a heat sink. So it diffuses the light and it acts like a partial heat sink. And notice that they are in fact in series. So the voltage comes in, it goes around and it comes out. So guys, 
that is just a quick one-off on LED bulbs. LED technology is absolutely amazing. It saves energy, it saves heat. They're less prone to hazardous chemicals like the mercury vapor, and they're less prone to excessive heat, which can create fires. They're extremely efficient, burning only five watts to 10 watts, usually. You can get them brighter, obviously, but the number one thing that I like about LED bulbs is that they are now more economical than ever. You can get a 24 pack of bulbs off Amazon and they might not be dimmable, but most rooms you're not gonna dim anyway. And my price off Amazon, I do believe was only like 20, $24 for a 24 pack. That's less than a dollar per bulb. And for all their benefits, they easily outweigh these older technologies. Time to convert over to LEDs. All right, guys, if you guys have any other questions, please go ahead and leave them down below. I'll read them and I'll see if I can get you the best answer I can. I have all my house converted over to LEDs and all my workbenches at work are now converted over to LEDs. They do save energy. They're less of a fire hazard. They're less of a workplace hazard because of the glass or the, the lack of glass rather. And they're not gonna create as much heat, which means the cooling system does not have to work nearly as hard. Anyway, guys, Thanks for watching. I hope you like these kind of videos. If you do, please give me a thumbs up down below and let me know if you guys have any other content ideas and I will do my absolute best to see if I can get you those kind of videos. Thanks for watching, guys.